Hey guys, for today's video, I actually thought about doing something a little bit different just to step it up. So for today's video, I want to actually do a POV video of me in a wedding. So I actually did some recording of me in a wedding with my Instago too. So I hope you guys like this. Just as a quick disclaimer, I'm so sorry if the audio and the visuals aren't that clear, but I will be pretty much doing a voiceover throughout the video. Well, I guess this is how everything starts. We arrive on location and we start getting our stuff out of the car, of course. Next, we will usually proceed to the reception area to get us to be approved to go upstairs to the bridal suite. And yeah, this will really vary from hotel to hotel. Some hotels are a bit more fussy and they take a bit longer to get us approved to go upstairs and some they are pretty snappy so it really does depend i guess you guys can see from me still waiting around here that this hotel is one of those fussy hotels i guess so we finally got the approval to go upstairs and we straight away proceed to go upstairs we did bump into the bride's friend in the lift and usually we tend to make friends with anyone involved in the wedding because it makes things a lot easier so do take note about that communication is everything in a wedding shoot so the better you are able to communicate the better shots you are ultimately going to have so usually when i have finally unpacked my camera gear the amongst the first few things that i actually start photographing is usually of course i'll go straight away to the bride and introduce myself again on that day and also the first thing would be either to dress or either either the dress or the floral bouquet and stuff like that so the dress the shoes those sort of details i'll tend to cover before she starts wearing them yeah however if i can't shoot any of those at the moment then i'll usually always shoot the bride getting ready first usually while shooting i like to engage in conversations with the bride so that she feels a bit more comfortable by my presence there i don't really like to be a sore thumb and just be this person who doesn't communicate with anyone around me during a wedding shoot because like i said if you do make people feel comfortable with you there's a better chance that you're actually gonna get better shots I'm not saying I take really great shots but I'm just saying this is what I do and so far this formula has been working for me so far so I guess I must be doing something right I hope anyway so usually right after I've done the details the bridal makeup and once she's ready I tend to shoot her alone and also I tend to do group pictures with her bridesmaids so yeah that's what I tend to do oh yeah um, and I do sneak in some family shots if the family is around the room as well so those are important shots that you must make sure you get also usually when I'm shooting I tend to use AV aperture priority mode when the lighting is constantly changing but I tend to use manual mode only when I know the lighting is pretty much bang on and it's not going to change that drastically. So if I'm going to a spot where things may get darker or lighter and I don't really know the lighting, then I'll leave the, the computer on the camera to decide for me what my exposures are and I'll keep on compensating whether I should make it you know overexposed or underexposed and I'm definitely not shy at all to admit that I do use some of the automated modes when I have to or when I need to because at the end of the day I think that you should worry about the shots being taken and not worry about you being this superhero that just knows all the manual settings because there are times that you just want things to work so to me the key is I tend to use manual mode only once I've gotten the shots that I really want and then I leave some room for some exploration or some experimentation so once the bride has to go downstairs I usually prepare myself to take some shots of her proceeding to go downstairs because sometimes you can get really nice personal shots and intimate shots at these sort of uh, moments just before she gets married so yeah this is quite important to actually capture as well even as she proceeds down the hallway i tend to try and get as much shots as i can because again these are moments where go fleeting and you can't repeat them at all these are real things that are happening around her 
and it's nice to actually document everything. So as a wedding photographer, I tend to make sure I document as much as I can of the days. And that's pretty much it. Also, as a photographer, you have to be pretty much nimble. So sometimes you've got to be behind the bride and sometimes you've got to be ahead of the bride. So you are always anticipating what's going to happen. Oh, and for those of you who are wondering how come I'm just covering the bride, while in actual fact, we are also covering the groom, but that's done by my other photographer. But since I'm doing a POV video, I'm just going to be showing stuff from my angle. So yeah, just in case you guys are wondering. Also, because there is definitely limitations to how long the battery can last on an Instago 2, I won't be exactly covering every single area that I was actually shooting. So this is pretty much a summary of what I did get. So just before the bride and her entourage and the groom and his entourage enters the hall to get married, usually I'll try and squeeze in as much shots as I can with the bridesmaids or even the groomsmen. So yeah, always try to find things to shoot uh, at every single moment you can. And uh, yeah, I think that's the best form of insurance I guess to make sure that you don't miss out on anything but of course don't overshoot yeah. but just know what you want to get but that being said I'm definitely a believer it's always better that you have more pictures than less pictures because if you have more you can always delete pictures or you don't have to accompany the pictures but if you've got less pictures to work with then you're pretty much stuck and that's why you don't want to be in that kind of a situation just as mentioned earlier it's pretty much going through the motions of just snapping everything that's going on in the event itself so right now i'm just getting some shots of the bride getting ready so i'm taking her expressions just before she enters the hall and because I don't really want to make this video too lengthy because it's just going to drag on a lot longer. So everything I shoot after this is pretty much documenting every single thing that does happen. And towards the end, we will cover the group pictures. And when we finally finish with the group pictures, we will start doing poses with the bride and groom. And that's pretty much it. That's how we wrap up the day. And this is a typical wedding shoot scenario how we actually shoot a wedding so i hope you did find this video helpful and useful and if you did please don't forget to give me a like comment share and subscribe and also if you do feel like making a small contribution to the channel i did leave a link to buy me a coffee in the in the description down below also i did leave links to all the gears that i used to make these videos so please do check them out right then i guess that's it thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video Peace.